it is given. It's what you do with it. I mean, I, I always believe that God gives you 100% talent. You have to work 10 times harder than everybody else. As a champion, it, even more, once you win, then you actually can't rest. Welcome to Visionaries Lounge. Tonight's great dreamer and achiever has managed to dance her way into the hearts of millions of people all over the world. Debo Kokobokwe is a dancer, she's a choreographer, an adjudicator, and businesswoman extraordinaire. A very good evening to you and welcome to Visionaries Thank Lounge. You. It's so wonderful to be here. Tell me about what you were like growing up. Um, I come from a family of six children, so we have six siblings. And my dad is a priest, so I come from a house where Mission House was a house for everybody. Mm -hmm. So I don't know where uh, th this dancing thing came from. Mm -hmm. I do remember dancing, traditional dancing, from when I was three years old. And apparently I was dancing and performing at four. So I did sit on a traditional dancing from there onwards. But uh, I, know, I wouldn't say my jaiva. I mean, traditional dancing, I say jaiva. <laughs> So they do, you know, sometimes in, in the townships where they say to you, Jaivan, Jaivan, no, 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 the most wonderful childhood memories uh, because we also, uh, the age group is, is between myself. I'm the second eldest. I've got an older sister and I had another one that passed away between the two of us. But I've got four siblings behind me and the age group between all of us is about eight years. So it was two, 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 two. Yeah. So we all So you could all relate. Yes, it was wonderful. Friends. My dad had this combi and oh my gosh, the memories of the food that we were eating, the kind of stuff we were doing is crazy. But so wonderful. I mean, I think it's, it's, it's what made us to be the kind of individuals we were and we are now. It's just, I don't know, I wouldn't trade it for anything. Are you still a close-knit family? <laughs> yes, very close-knit yeah. family. Um, I think because of my mom. So at what point in your life, uh, growing up in Mahiking, did you decide, or, I don't know, this dance thing might just be something? It wasn't at any point. Mm. I mean, um, the amazing thing is that at that time we were living in the old Botswana, and I think they were very futuristic in the sense that they built this cultural center. And it had basically everything and anything that any young child would need. They had music, they had dance, they had um, gymnastics, they had, I mean, Jeko Mohoti at that time, who was like South African champion gymnast, was from there. They had, of course, Radio Bop and they had the Koristi. So it was, for me, it, I think it opened up a whole genre of careers for young people that never thought they would ever have careers mm -hmm. like that. So I happened to be one of those girls that went to dancing and the boys went to karate. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> that, kind, that kind of scenario. So imagine they've just opened this and they bring in all these teachers and then, of course, my dad was very strict, um, perhaps too strict, mm -hmm. and I just needed to get away from home. So, so this that's was why. His case. Yeah, this was. <laughs> and I was I'm like, going dancing. You leave me alone. Yeah, he couldn't actually say no purely because I was a straight A student. So he couldn't. Okay. Uh, he and had no way. Yeah, dispute, yeah, you yeah. going dancing. So off I went to dancing, and that's really where it began. It wasn't really a planned thing. It was just, just gonna dance. dance. As a dance teacher, Debo turned professional at age 16. She came second in her first competition and within a year was in the top three in the country. And the winners, Kay and Siane and T. Kabokwe. But I never, honestly, if you'd asked me uh, in my mama trick years whether I'd be continuing with dancing, never. So when did the penny drop? When I started making money from yeah. dancing. And when did that happen? When I was 16 years old. Mm -hmm. And my parents didn't know. So my dad didn't know I was earning a salary. They thought I was just dancing. So tell me about when you're 16 and how that opportunity came about for you to earn a living from dancing. So it's this group of young people, they bring in specialists to say we need to train teachers. Mm -hmm. And I happened to be in that group. 
of, of young people that were trained. I also happened to be one of the few young people that stayed in dance. You know when something is new, everybody just goes and joins it and they all realize, okay. It's <laughs> been a lot there. of hard work. Yeah, up to three months is like, okay. Yeah. And they start missing classes. And I was one of those few that stayed and continued. And then of course, earning money from dancing at 16 and nobody knew about it except my siblings. Mm -hmm. Just great. Because you were the go to person when anybody yes. needed air time. Yes, because my dad needed yes, or whatever. No, but there was no air time at the time. So. No <laughs> oh my goodness. There was no air time then. But, but because my parents didn't know, and my dad was very strict, he was one of those that we will provide everything at home so you don't get pocket money for school, nothing. So I was the one that my siblings would get like stuff So they from. had to keep that secret. Yes. No, they had to. Because they were benefiting was, from it. Of course. And we were, all, we were all benefiting. I think if any one of them had been in the same situation, yes. they would all do it. So it was one of those, it's like, guys, we've got this, you know, mm. type. And it was wonderful. wonder when someone makes a career out of uh, you know something in the art space how much of it is hard work and commitment and how much of it is just raw talent um talent is given it's what you do with it mm -hmm. I mean I, I always believe that God gives you a hundred percent talent it's really what you do with it it's the willingness to work with the mm -hmm. talent that you're given the willingness to pursue it further is to take the talent and the tree that's what I believe. God gives you talent. It's what you do with it. And it can be packaged differently. Mm. So we'll and to find out what you did with it after this short break. When we come back, we speak about your accolades and the heights of your career. And I think they are still continuing because you have big plans coming up. Okay. And we'll find out about <laughs> that in just a moment. Stay with us. We're planning to also be world champions. We're planning to win the 10 dance champions, which means the ballroom and the Latin, and in a very short time. Yeah, we think it's possible. Time. We're going to work hard. Welcome back, and thanks again for joining us. Our guest this evening is the undefeated South African professional ballroom champion. She is a world-class professional Latin American finalist and she is the undefeated Latin American South African champion a whopping seven consecutive times. Absolutely amazing. Deboko, let's speak a little bit now about your heights as a professional dancer. When did you start milking in those awards? Um, the awards started, I think, from the age of 19. Mm. Um, I was South African runners-up at 17 years old. And then I was the British semi-finalist at that time, professional at 18. And I think that I was professional for a very young age. I was too young, actually. Uh, normally, everybody that's professional is running their 30s, and I was 16, 17. And I take it you were really tiny because you're petite as it is. I'm imagining uh, you at 16. No, really actually, actually not. No? no, 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 no. Mm -hmm. it, it wasn't like that. I mean, I had really serious issues with my body. I think a lot of people don't really understand dancing as a professional. I think a lot of people think it's just, just dancing. Dancing as a professional is the same as a soccer player professional. Yeah. Um, it's not a soccer player outside playing and ju and, and, yeah. and, and, and. So dancing it's is not a professional. Hobby. It's not a hobby. Mm -hmm. It's actually it's a career, mm -hmm. and uh, internationally, it's it makes or breaks you. So everything, your body, the way you're dancing, but it's not even the way you're dancing. It's the I think what people don't understand is the amount of time and effort and what it takes to actually get to the top. Dancing, they will watch your body. They will talk about your body. They will tell you how bad it is, and then on top of that, they'll tell you how heavy that body is for your partner. And then talk about your dancing on top of that. Oh so goodness. it's, and, and it, what it requires is that in order to avoid that, you have to work 10 times harder than everybody else. Mm. As a champion, it even more, once you win, then you actually can't rest at all. Because the art form and the techniques is, mm. is to help you be able to preserve yourself. 
So as a teenager who's going through, I'm sure, adolescence like anybody else, yes. you now have these body images to contend with, yes. this extremely competitive world that you're in. Yep. What were your challenges with your body uh, per se? What, what, what did you tell yourself at that time? Well, it's not what I told myself. I remember being told that I'm too big. I remember getting into a room and a, a photo being thrown at me and it was a photo of me turning and of course it showed my legs and my thighs. It was probably the most difficult thing that I've had to go through also. Mm. It went from just people liking me and not liking me to now comments of you're very big, you're too fat, you're this, you're that. It became very personal. You know, my knees were too dark, my thighs were far too big, my bums were just they were everywhere. I mean, um, I just was not the right body for dancing. The bull whore is an outstandingly vivacious girl with very strong leg lines. Ideally, I would prefer to see a slightly slimmer profile. So the body changes that you, you don't know, but also being told that I have to do something about it. And of course, being someone that understands that I have to do something about it. I did. What did you do? I did everything. I stopped eating. I did all the diets you can imagine. I went everything including pads, including G5 machines where people were not doing it. As an 18 year old, I was using my salary, part of it to go to machines. I remember doing G5 and they rubbed me. And I said to them, keep pushing. They rubbed me and I came out blue black. And I actually eventually was anorexic from eating one orange a day. My mom came back and she helped heal me back. Yeah. Some of these things are crazy. I remember one of the competitors coming to say, oh, I had to come and see, I hear that you're dying. I heard that you're dying. And I wanted to come and see it with my own eyes. And at that time I was holding myself at the rails. Like, oh, really? you're gonna hold yourself up. So, and that's the, the reality of a competitive world. It's cutthroat. It's excessively cutthroat. And I think nothing can prepare you for it. It's, it's so cutthroat because you can't control what people do. The only thing that was really nice was winning because that for me was that's how you gave back that's how like, i gave back that, well, that those were my punches boom. look at all this yeah. amazing <laughs> <laughs> but um the hearty championships was like a month ago we won <coughs> all the sections and it was very unexpected because we've been dancing for, together for about six oh, weeks yeah, like really, so really everybody yeah i guess we made a lot of enemies then <laughs> all the other competitions they couldn't believe it especially myself that yeah. was very unexpected nice. so you rise above it um you keep on winning because that's how you perhaps yeah. affirm yourself and you put your mark uh, on the greater scheme of things and then on top of that you're black yes. so there's another battle that you need to face yes talk to me about um, that i think that battle because when we grew up uh, we didn't grow up at that time, wasn't part of South Africa. Mm -hmm. So I went to, fortunate enough that I was at a multiracial school, so I didn't know from primary. So I really didn't understand it until I started competing in South Africa, mm -hmm. where we were the only black dancers. And then Making afterwards, sense. when people told you straight that don't think you're white, don't do something about it, and don't do that to your hair, because you'll never be white, and do something about your big, you know, body and whatever and do something about your you know your knees are too yeah, dark yeah. and then this is too it, it it was extremely personal through it all through you it all. continue to rise yes you become this brand that we know today talk to me about that well, besides the brand, but I have to talk about going back just on what mm. we talked about. I mean, I remember winning South African championships and being thrown cans of cool drink when you when you walk out. It just that becomes your reality. When when you're South African champion and you go to a meeting and they say, "Who are you?" and I'm saying, "I'm your current professional champion," and they don't bother to know your name, or, you know, even to pronounce mm. it well. When you've completed for a country and you've more than gone to about 13 world championships and you don't even get and you've made semi-finals you made finals at some of them and you don't get a good luck you don't get a congratulations you don't get anything you don't get acknowledged you, whatsoever you, you realize and when your number two couple actually has helped fundraised and you have to f take yourself there then you really understand where, where it's all about but it's really really hurtful there's nothing uh, that that becomes your reality i remember when we were all the world championships that i've done we were the only black or South African couples that didn't have anybody next to you. I mean, we didn't have our trainers. We didn't have anybody. And the other countries, they'd come in with 
people from their own country would come in and some of them even brought people to support. I mean, even when we had the world champions in South championships in South Africa, the organizers couldn't even say good luck. They would say good luck to all the international competitors except us. It was just the most bizarre thing. That's what I'd like to change. What did that do to your psyche as a dancer? Because I, I think your mental preparedness is, is just as more important as, as the physical aspect. I think I believe that they couldn't touch me. That's where they couldn't touch me. Mm -hmm. They couldn't take away the gift of dance. And my job was I'm going to work so hard. I'm going to dance so well. I'm going to be not better than them. I'm going to make them look like they're nothing. Mm. I love that. <laughs> and you did it. I did it. You did it. Yeah. Because now <laughs> I'm sure all those people who were dancing with you cannot ignore you. All those people are the You've ones that come. A force. They're the ones that come to me for help. And that's pretty cool. Oh, that's <laughs> that's pretty pretty oh, that's sweet. Sweet. <laughs> so sweet. That is awesome. That, 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 is, is, that, awesome. Is, that is extremely sweet. Uh, mm. and, and I love that. And, and actually, mm. wonderful that you can actually coach some of the people that you dance against. I was very clear that I'd love any dancer that follows after me to understand what it's all about. I want to get more life lessons and <laughs> take a look at what the future has in store for you in just a moment. Stay with us. I love it. Dynamite in the small package. <laughs> more after this. I'm the ultimate queen of dance. <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> I'm a fabulous dance coach. I'm a choreographer. I am an adjudicator. I'm a businesswoman, an arts activist, and I'm a mom. <laughs> sure. Welcome back. You're watching Visionaries Lounge. Debo Kokobokwe joins us tonight. She is a dancer, a choreographer, an adjudicator. Did I forget to say award winning? <laughs> in fact, so it's not just any old dancer. Because you know, sometimes we think just because we can dance, <laughs> we can call ourselves dancers. But you're also a businesswoman. Talk to me about that. You won an award for 2013, 2014. Please correct me if I'm wrong. Most influential businesswoman. Yes, um, I actually won uh, before Leaders of Tomorrow, mm. of, uh, and that was early on in my career. And it was nice, actually, to see that later on in 2014, I could win the actual category. Mm. So at that time, the Leaders of Tomorrow were young women that are tomorrow going to be the leaders. So it was absolutely awesome to be able to win the country and then, of course, win for the region also. So I got to win for both awesome. the country How do you the combine the two, the business aspect and the creative? I always have. I, I've always, maybe because I come from a banking, um, an accounting background, I've always understood that in the arts, I had to run myself as a business. So it's, mm. I started with that first, was that the money that I got, I was the business. I understood that, that I was the business. So from 16 and 17, I opened up my first company and all the money that went with into the business, that was me. Mm. And then later on from that, I had an, an entertainment company where it was dance entertainment. So I was uh, running an entertainment company for big, big um, corporates and we were providing entertainment, dance entertainment specifically. Mm. Um, then it evolved from that into dance studios and I had four dance studios. I can stand up in front of everyone just to express myself. She also taught me how to strive, never give up, hang in there and work hard. For me, Tibuko has shown me how to control things, how to really grow and, and show people what I can do. We've all learned that she's not only our teacher in helping us to reach our goals, but she's out there supporting the underprivileged, helping the kids that can't dance or can't afford to dance and to teach them life skills. So it makes her a truly wonderful person. We all love her very much. <laughs> And it moved then now to the education space. Uh, I do think that one of the biggest problems is that we don't have proper education in the arts. So for example, you don't have, let's say, a BCom specializing in dance or specializing in music. I think you should have, if you're wanting to educate children of the future, we're going to have to be able to make sure that we can equip them to live in the future. So this is what you're going to be teaching at your school? This is our school of the future. Yeah. <laughs> Got some of your dresses here yes, as well. You yes. told me that a number of them you've given away. So I'm yes. glad to see that you still have some <laughs> these, to bring these are, to bring these are small today. mementos, yes. literally. And I think they're small purely because some of them won't fit anybody except 
very, very, very young tiny, dancers. Tiny yeah. But I think it's nice to still have some that are left. And this dress I did towards, this was probably my last dress when, we, when I did my last show uh, in Australia. Uh -huh. And it was possibly, I think, about 10,000 people. And, and, and it's very skimpy. It's like, it's yeah, this there's is there's <laughs> dress is there? <laughs> I'm speaking, there's not I'm a lot of dress. I'm saying, there's body, but there's not much but you know what was, What's nice is what we were, we were trying to do a twirling of African, but yeah. it had a, a funky kind of Indian. Oh. So if you imagine, uh -huh. I mean, this is hardly dress, right? That's the skirt bit. <laughs> <laughs> that's a, like what does it cover it's, it covers everything because i'm not necessarily the biggest person around. that's the skirt and then bit. that's a skirt that's the boob bit and then we've got a hanging parts yes so you got one and one okay. and oh gosh okay you have to and hold it on moves. this side okay yes. i'll hold this and okay. it kind of like works like around this okay and then and this then hangs it back and then it's shake 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 I see why you won all those awards. <laughs> it must have looked so beautiful. <laughs> You're a mommy too. Yes, I'm a mommy. Talk to me about that. I've got two gorgeous boys. Um, they're four and eight. Oh. And um, they're energetic like me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. But um, they're very energetic. Uh, mm. And possibly, I think, God gave me children that would understand. I've got a, a, a schedule and living and working in the arts is difficult. Mm -hmm. And somehow I've got these children that seem to understand. They're not always understand, but I think they're forgiving. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I'm grateful. I'm grateful for that. But you know what? When you succeed, you subconsciously yes. give them uh, a permission, as it were, yes. to go and pursue their dreams yes. and to go and be what they would like to be. And you've set a platform for them to go from there to higher heights, yes, I think. Yes, definitely. The fact that I've put in all my time and energy and I've not done all the other things I would have liked to in order to reach where I wanted to with my dancing uh, makes me very proud. I get, I'm so proud that maybe some people might think maybe she's just too much, but I really am proud with what I've done. I'm blessed to have had a talent that I could take to such heights. <laughs> what does the future have in store for you? Um, I've prayed for a lot of things, but I'm... I'm grateful because at the moment I really have to say I'm I'm one of I think the few people around my friends that are living a life that they would never have imagined I'm mm. very grateful of my life um, of course with the Academy I've always dreamed uh, of having an institute institute which means of higher learning mm. and um, of course the dream is seeing the Institute of higher learning but an African Institute and to have a hub of um, indigenous dance research mm. and we would be the archive so if you want to know anything about South African and eventually African indigenous dance you would come to our institute and hopefully Harvard would come to us <laughs> yes. Harvard's and, and the Oxford of this world will come to us yeah. and we will be sending out specialists that go all over the world dancing meeting academia Totally. Love it. Totally. And I thoroughly loved speaking to you. Thank, Thank you. you so much. <laughs> Thank you. I hope you've enjoyed it as well. So just remember when you're dancing, also to use your head, to think, to plan for the future, to dream big. This is, after all, what Visionaries Lounge is all about, to awaken the vision within you. Let's do it all over again next week. Same time, same place. Good night. I've been given the gift of dance and I've understood that when you are given a gift, it's what you do with it. I totally believe that you don't have to be normal. I don't believe in being normal. I believe in extraordinary. I believe that the world needs extraordinary people, especially our country. I believe in talent that has no limits at all. So do not settle for being normal and don't settle for normal talent, settle for extraordinary talent. There is no limit and I believe there shouldn't be any limit. There is no book that says that you can't or you shouldn't. So I don't believe it. I don't think anybody should. Mm -hmm.